phone. And I know you guys are like, ah, oh, they're calling me two people names, but I'm telling you, connections, if she's not her head. <laughs> so the connections are important. So, Ms. Holman does the Zoom. I'm not really a face person. And she said I can come to this, I'm not scared. But I'm more of a behind the scenes, I'd rather put you on a call and you all call and then I'm going to look at the person's day. So when she was doing the Zoom, she was like, you know, there's so many ways that you can connect with people without having to be in the room with them. I'm thinking, okay, well, I am going to do Zoom, I said I look at them. So let me just tell you about something else. And so I said, let me just try this podcast again. I downloaded an app. The app is called Anchor. A-N-C-H-O-R. And I'm sure, because we have thrown it out in the universe, I'm going to be offensive. By the time you get on your app and all your phones and stuff, Anchor's going to come up. All in the face tonight. All in the face tonight. Because they just pick it up in the same, the Alexa and all that stuff. They just pick it up. So I downloaded this app called Anchor. Purple. Purple app. But you see, coming out. You see a real Anchor. So like the name. That's not it. It's a purple app. I downloaded it, and it has a way for you to talk, for you to control how many minutes you want to talk, how you want music in the background, you want to name it, or whatever. So just to try it out, I was just playing with it at first. But it's something about pressing the word finish, that I didn't know that meant it was finish, finish. And so two days later, I got a message from Anchorman, your podcast is now on iTunes. And I was like, hey, I don't know that. That was real cool. So you can go back in and you can delete, but it was uh, it was really impressive to me how fast it was able to matriculate through the system where you had different stations and different things like that. So we're talking about how you start. You have to choose a niche. Choose what you want to talk about. And you have to be consistent with that. Now, if you're going to have a sport-related theme, then someone who's listening to your podcast in Montana or California should be able to pick that up and still hear for it. It shouldn't go left immediately. And I know that's kind of hard because we're going to wire it a little bit. So I'm talking about one thing, and by the time we hang up the phone, it's like, oh, my God. So for us, we have to kind of hone in the subject matter that we want to talk about. So that's what you have to first establish. What am I going to talk about? Because once you establish what you're going to talk about, then you know who you're talking to. It's a broad range, I'm telling you. If I'm telling you that 103 million people are listening to it, I don't have to cater to all 103. But it would be nice. So then you need to title it. I titled my podcast under, if you look it up, it's under the hashtag get noticed. Why I put the hashtag in there, don't ask me. I was always using hashtag because I thought hashtag leads you to where you're trying to go, but I did not need to name my podcast comes with a hashtag on it to start with. But it was already gone out there in the station land, so I just went with it. You want to create your artwork. You want to find someone who is very good at design. Shameless plug again, that will be very pretty moment of what we create services. I don't do graphics, but you do that. <laughs> and the reason why you want to do that is because you want to be able to attract people with your artwork. I'll give you an example. <laughs> so every time I put out a podcast, that's what it has. Well, my face was the face of the Get Notice podcast. So anytime you go on any listening device, any of those listening devices, you're going to see that face. Face brings recognition even if people can't remember your name, if they can't remember the name of your podcast, if they see your face, if they remember that face, then they'll associate that with that anytime they're working for you. So you want to make sure you have some type of artwork because that's consistent. It doesn't matter what you're talking about. That's the name of that podcast, Ready, right? Set, Go. But it still falls under Get Notice. It still falls under that picture. Consistency is what will keep you going. When people pull you up, they're going to say, wow, you have had all these different episodes, but it's still under the same subject matter, it's still under the same person. Even if you have a guest, you can put the guest somewhere on there, but you still want to make sure you're identified. Then you want to get the right equipment. So I saw a picture earlier of some equipment, and um, 
I know that you have some equipment already. So that is great. If you have a quiet space, she said she's building an area in her home just to, you know, run out the noise. That helps with um, stations like Tidal, stations like Google Play and Amazon Music. Because you have to have it in a WAV format to get on those channels. And what they're saying is the WAV is for artists. Artists have a, a sound barrier or a loud noise or something. In, whatever you have going on in your background, some people record their podcast in a car. So you hear a lot of traffic or you hear, you know, the money off the horn, you hear all of that. That is fine on any of those listening devices except for Tidal, Google Play, and they want it as clear and use the music. They want it as clear as possible for their audience. So your title does nothing but music, real music. So in order to for you to branch out on a listening device like that as a podcaster, it has clear. So on title, I don't have any music in my background. I don't have, the only thing you hear is my voice. And the engineer that I had to drown out all the sound or the white noise that they call. Uh, he was able to do that, and he told me you have to put it in wave format. So now that you know that, you don't have to uh, go through the expense of having someone clean your uh, podcast if you want it on those devices. And then you want to make sure that you're getting podcast hosting. So I don't have all my hosting up here because I have it back there on the table. I, I couldn't fit it on here because I, I like the stuff to be simple. So I put the ones that I knew would catch people's attention when I'm marketing this. Some of them are not on there, like Pocket Cast is not on there. I don't see YouTube music is on there, but they're still the same channels that I have. But when I'm dealing with certain audiences, I know that you know everybody knows about the title pretty much. So that's always my first one, because that's a big music stream. Pandora, I had Pandora last year. I didn't continue with Pandora this year only because, so you need to write this down. There is a place, I mean, there is a company called Record Union. Record Union is who all the artists that use to have their music put on platforms. Pandora takes a long time. It's easier to just email Pandora yourself and send them what you have than it is to go to the listening devices. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if it's because they have so many or whatnot. They take a very long time. And so, unfortunately, with record union, it's only $15 a year. So when you're talking to people and they're saying, oh, I can help you, it's going to be $1,500, or I can do this, it's going to be $2,000, always do your research. Always say, oh, okay, I'll get back to you. Sorry. Always do your research. Or you can call me. <laughs> Because people are putting their taxation on, and of course, it takes time and different things like that. If you can do it yourself, then you can save a lot of time and money. So it's $15 to join Record Union. From that $15, they offer you a package. The package has two big names and two small names. So it may say you can go Pandora, Shazam, or you can go Tidal, uh, Shazam, you can add Pandora. So whenever you get com and it'll tell you. But they will not post any of your things without graphics, without artwork. They so can't just send them, you know, a cutout picture of you from, you know, how to rule. <laughs> but it has to be the, and I'm not a graphic person, but I'm, I'm assuming the JTAG TNG format. So you want to make sure you have hosting. These are all the hosting places. When you go through Anchor, Anchor will send you an email every single time your podcast is picked up from a new state. It is your responsibility. This is how we get to the money part. It is your responsibility to share that with the universe. So they're sharing it with you, and they're hosting it, and then Anchor is free, and you have an iPhone. Oh, my goodness. It will just open the door to other things. No offense to the Android, they get the best pictures. That's the only thing that so you're responsible for putting it out to the masses. So now you need to decide when and how often. I post the podcast every Saturday morning. That's just my thing. That's not mandatory. You don't have to do that. I mean, after a while, sometimes I kind of scale back and do every other Saturday. But 
you have to be consistent because you're building an audience. Once you get your audience and your following, then you can kind of hit them with however you want to do. I don't recommend doing one every day because if you can't keep that up, then it, yeah, that's a lot. But at least weekly, maybe monthly, depending on what you're talking about, engage your people in your conversation. I always say at the end of mine, I look forward to hearing your feedback. Please email me, and I put my I have my email address and everything because I want to hear the feedback, whether it's good or bad or whatever. I want to hear it, and also give them some sense of oh, I get to connect. Some people do come to the dump. So you pick and you decide when and how often. You can post it at midnight if you want to. Some have it up somewhere. So you can, however you decide to do it. If you're a very busy person. I, I tend to record all mine in one day, and then I just stagger them. I get the artwork done first, and then I just stagger them because I'm a very busy person, so I can't just sit there and say, oh, then hey, you know, it's Saturday, time to do a podcast. I already have them, and that's the good thing about Anchor. It will store it until you're ready. And then you can go in and let them know I'm ready to send it, and then that's it. Make sure you listen to it, make sure you approve it, because once it's gone, it's gone. Then you want to strategize for lunch. Saturday morning, for me, that is a great time for me to put out everything that I have. So people who follow me on social media, it's a major adrenaline rush with me in the morning. I give you everything. So throughout the day, I'm not going to remember, I'm not going to pick up my phone, or remember to go on the computer or something. So I hit you with everything. Now, I have a friend, Bernie, there that did teach me that there are certain times of day that it's the best time to post things. I haven't mastered that yet, so everybody's still getting cluttered in the morning. So that means you pray, and you go over to me like, good night. That's me. But I am working on that, trying to space it out, and now I've discovered that you can control when you want things posted on uh, social media. It lets you know the times and the day. You can put something on the next Friday. Oh, cool. <laughs> So you want to try that for lunch. You want to let your friends, your business friends, and I was sharing with the young lady earlier, this is how you weed people out. Okay, so you, you have, you picture a house, and you walk in the house, and you have a sofa in the living room, and then you have a sink or a toilet in your bathroom. You never walk in the house and have a toilet in your living room and a sofa in your bathroom. <laughs> so you got to kind of play with your friends and family and social media and determine who you need all of them to make a whole house, but you need a core group of people to get this out. So I separated my business page from my personal a, a good many years ago because I needed my business-minded people to see this. My personal friends, they're still talking about a session you tomorrow, which, you know, that's what they will be talking about because this is something new. However, if people know you how they know you, that's really where they mind. So you have to control that and control the narrative of that. And in doing so, you have to target the right audience. So you may have 5,000 friends, but only 100 of them are going to share your business. You need to drop all 4,900 and start. 4,000 each. That's all it is. So then you want to make sure that you strategize the launch and you get the audience that you want. The audience that you want is going to help push this. Because in order for you to make money, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. In order for you to make money, you need listeners. In order for you to get listeners, you need supporters who are going to share what you're doing and help push it and promote it. So then you want to get sponsored. And here's how you get sponsored. So on Anchor, after about six months, I was driving traffic to this. Like, please, you're like, listen. Listen. In my head, I want to say, I can get all of those things on and I'm but I say, I can get it out for a living. Just listen. Just tell me what you think. But it was driving people to that. And after a while, Anchor and Pocket Cast. So when you get on Anchor tonight, you'll see, after you do it for a while, there's a green dollar sign that pops up. That green dollar sign is from those states. And they're saying, do you want to do sponsorships with us? The sponsorship is a script that they give you. And because I had two radio people here, they would talk with that. But on that script, it will say, would you like to uh, host your podcast with Anchor? It's in your voice. You're doing it. You're reading the script and they okay it and they say it's fine. Or would you like to listen to 
podcast on Cat Talk. Every time someone comes to your uh, um, <coughs> podcast and they hear that, those companies pay. If someone signs up with them, they pay you pay. Because essentially, you are their advertiser now. So, you really need, it's a circle of life. <laughs> you need the people to support your podcast so that your podcast can move. And then once it's moving, then you will become a sponsor to the, the station and then you make money every time those people listen. So if you can do that off of two or three podcasts that you produce and you have so many people supporting it, listening to it, and you see the green number sign come up, and so now you're making money off of that every single Saturday. When I put one out, I don't have to do it anymore. Starting there. So once I got all those stations to send me a script, and I said, okay, fine, I'll say, I'll say all this for you. And it's a real script, so you got to kind of rehearse, and then there's no break, there's no edit, there's nothing. You can't just say, oh, I didn't say that. Oh, yeah, say that, do that. you got to make sure it's right, because it's going out to their audience not to be yours. So once you do that, it stays. You can control when you want to cut it off. I don't know why you want to do that, but they have it where you can control whether you want to stop or keep going. I just had them keep going. You did the no brain. Every podcast that I load, I slide that little sign over. Yes, you want me to take that. Yes, you want me to take that. I mean, I probably do that before I even listen to see the sound of it. <laughs> So the goal is to make money and the goal is to have sponsorship and you will have continued sponsorship when you do the next thing. So we're big on the hashtag and we use hashtags for all kinds of things. But what you have to realize is you're competing against 14 to 20 million people who are podcasts. So how do I know if you have a podcast if 20 million people have a podcast on cooking? So you put in key words to identify you. Now, I shared this with someone I can't remember. And we have a term here, so I'm going to break myself. But I went into the over podcast, and I cut the piece all of her hashtags. Mine is the ones that had nothing to do with my business. Because I felt like if anyone else to her up, why not be, you know. So the people that have websites are familiar with the SEO. So you know how to arrange yourself on Google is, and when people look you up, and, you know, you have a test cleaning service, you want to be the number one test cleaning service when they look you up. Okay, it's pretty much the same thing in the podcast world. You want to be able to go type in business, if yours comes up, probably not first, because they only get competing with, like, Wall Street and different people who are talking about business, but you still want to come up. You still want to get in that top 20% of listeners. But you get in that top 20% of listeners by driving people so you have to live, think, breathe, talk it. So when you pick something, make sure you pick something that's tied to what you already do. So if my brand title is Get Noticed, of course my podcast is going to be that. Because I want you to have it in your thoughts, in your mind, in your prayers, all of that good stuff with that one thing. Keep it really simple. Don't name it something that they got to keep typing and it's not even enough room left, so now they got to back up. Make it really simple. Your title can be whatever you want it to be, but the title of your podcast is something simple, if not your name. So why is podcasting important? I feel that podcasting is important because it's a new age way of communicating. It's a new age way of getting the message out, getting people to understand what it is do, understanding the importance of what you're talking about. We listen to podcasts in the car now more than we do music. Unfortunately, I make my kids listen to me. Okay. If you don't want to listen to me, in real life, you don't listen to me for her <laughs> But no, seriously, anyone who gets in my car, they know the first 10, 15 minutes of this ride is going to be this podcast. Because I have to have it engraved in your mind that you can be out, oh, that's great. Okay, was it great enough for you to share? Was it great enough for you to tell someone else about? If not, I'm going to start over. So you have to have critical thinkers. Not, when you get ready to do this podcast, don't listen to mom. Mom is going to shoot you a big share with you for the rest of her life. <laughs> so that's not the person you want to send it to. Send it to 
somebody who you know is very opinionated about everything. Because they're going to give you the truth. And they'll say, well, no, we need to practice not saying um so much. If you find yourself saying um, just slow down. Just pause. Every time I stop and pause and stare at me, I'm just trying not to say um. <laughs> but after a while, no one know that. It's not like, oh man, we have got to speak together. I'm practicing not to say um too, because when I'm alone doing the process, I'm not looking at anybody. So who's going to be the judge? Who's going to give me that look like? <clears throat> so you want to make sure that you're giving someone who can give you a subjective as well as an objective approach. Not someone who's going to say, oh, I love that. What did I just say? Oh, I don't know, but I love it. That music that she had, all that was so calm and soothing. But what was the content? I don't know. I'm just really you on there. So you don't want to have that. You want to make sure you have someone who's going to give you the truth. Now, do we have any questions before? As before? Is there no platform for us to progress? Is there a fee that you have to pay for the board of us to progress? Not through Anchor. So with Anchor, Unless you pay for apps, I can have a Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah. So no, no, that's it. The only thing that I pay for is my subscription with Apple. That's the only thing I pay for, and I pay fifteen dollars a year. And so when you go on Market Me, you'll see they have these little buckets uh, where you can pay two dollars to add Pandora, or you can pay two dollars to add. Pay two dollars to add YouTube music. You can pay two dollars, or you can get this bundle that they have for like twenty-five dollars. It comes with two names instead of small names. The only reason why I was saying there's nothing wrong with Pandora is just that if you pay that bundle, you're not guaranteed to get on Pandora in that same year. So it's just easier to go to Pandora by itself versus going to that because you don't want to waste your money. If you want to pay to be on a device, you want to be on the device the same year you pay for it. So record you need is yearly. They'll send you an email and you know when your subscription is going to um, end when you like to renew. You can renew with a new, they call it algorithm on there, but you can renew with your new thing. So I have two on title, but they still have the same face and everything. You just would have to go under both of them to hear different quote unquote tracks. But it's to cater to all audiences. So title is more for the young millennials who like to listen to music all day. How does it listen to podcasts too? I encourage educators to just start podcasting because they are in the night all day. Any other questions? Yes. You mentioned the use of music. How do you deal with copyright issues, permissions to use person's music or uh, as somebody's song for your introduction? Okay, so when I'm saying music, I'm saying the instrumentals that Anchor provides. Mm -hmm. It's not really, you know, somebody music. It's just whatever they provide, the elevator music. Okay. Um, my background building my podcast, um, my other co director that came to the room, Jarell Rao, he's also a professional copper artist. She um, my, she did the voice over for my podcast. And I talked with a local captain as a rapper, and I got written permission from him to use the instrumental of his music for my podcast. So long as I make sure the legalities are taken care of in exchange of marketing them, I let people know at the end of my podcast, she does the work over, he did the music. And when you put that on title, you will have to identify that. Yes. So it's a place on there. So the guy who made my, uh, he made my, WAD format for me. When I put it on title, I had to look that. Anybody, if you bring in a guest or anything, when you get to title, you have to, because they copyright everything. So if you go on there and show who produced it, who did this, who said that, who would have her name on it, who had a pastor's name on it, just so, it just in case 20 years from now, if you're not friends anymore, and they come here to say, you just made all this one process, you owe me. Mm -hmm. You know, we had to understand me. That when I paid him thirty dollars to put it in wing for me, that was the end. And you get none of this. Thank you. You can just thank you. But you get none of this. So you have to make sure you identify that. But go back to your question. It's just standard elevator music that they have. 
but they've had it broken down to where it's inspirational, or it's pop, or it's um, like culture, or whatever it is. Whatever type of music you want to hear, but it's in an instrumental format, so they don't run into those problems. Have you run into any situation where those platforms either through praise and whatever prevent you from directing traffic to another app or another platform? Do they censor you at all? No, so what I do when I go on my podcast on Saturday morning, I give you every possible stream. I take the top three to be honest, but I still have the rest of them listed if you need it. But I still look for the iPhone. And then I do Google for the other people. <laughs> and then uh, I'm not really sure who that to belong to, but I just want to have a little bit of the uh, So it's not connected to a company. No. Okay, cool. So I, uh, I probably should know that. I'm going to know that. All right. So once you establish your platform, you can walk up to Alexa and say, play, but it doesn't touch, and then it's about playing. So I give people those options, but okay, so on Anchor, they're going to tell you, once they show you where your podcast went, they give you the link. It's completely up to you if you want to give this audience all your iTunes and this audience all your Google and this audience all your YouTube, it's completely up to you. How do you decide to do it? But they give you every link to have. And I like to have multiple links because I like to see Oh, I can put you up on my phone. Really? Here's one another. <laughs> you know, you know. I'm sorry, and one final, I think, I don't know if, you, if, if this is what you were touching on, but if, if they're listening to my podcast on Amazon Music, and I say check me out on iTunes and Google Play, is Amazon Music going to stop me from doing that because I'm on Amazon telling them to check me out on their competitors' platform? And I'm going to hear that on Amazon because it's one app that you're using that's funneling it to all locations. Okay. So unless you're making a podcast and specifically saying check me out on Amazon on your anchor, then you might run into an issue if you're trying to get it on all the stations. Okay. But if you just make a generic podcast and then it is sent out, you can say verbally on your platform, check me out on Amazon. Yeah, but not, not, not in your not in your content. Anybody else? Thank you. That's so great. So, basically, what you're doing is you're pre-recording and that message is being distributed to everybody. Like, you're not individually going one to the single one, one to the single one. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, 20 points. If you don't have a certain platform, like, I'm not really familiar with Freaker and all of them. I'm not really familiar with them. So, if you don't have a certain platform, you will find yourself in but this platform offers to extend it. It's actually 17 pages. I just only have to do it 12. I don't know why. But it's actually 17 of them. So they are pretty much disseminating the information through these little networks. And then whoever is picking it up is picking it up. And after a while, when you do so many, then one company don't want to lose out versus another. So I mean, they're pretty much all connected to one umbrella and then go from there. The reason why Tyler is standing on this is because Anchor can't funnel a voice to a music app, Tidal, Google Play, Amazon Music. You would have to do that. But it's still the same recording, but you would have to do that. Now, what would you do? I'm sorry. I just, I just have a question. Do you have kind of a, like, how long are your podcasts typically? Like, like, do you have kind of a standard? Have you found that people only listen for five minutes? Can you tell that? Like, do you know what I mean? They will give you all the analytics, like every podcast. It will tell you how many people listen. It will tell you, it will tell you how much money you make per podcast. And what I have found is me personally, I have found that the longer you make it, the more people listen. Like, I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. So once you engage them and get them in, that's good. Now, if you were like doing, uh, someone was doing two, you were doing two. So if you're doing like a YouTube channel and you're podcasting with it, that's different. So say for example, if uh, Ruth is doing this event, she's talking to people about the things she shared about startup grind, that might last 15, 20 minutes. 
but the audience is engaged because they're trying to understand what she did. But if you're talking about something, what I do typically, I figure out what I want to talk about and then I'm about to really know. I don't read from a paper because I'm the type of person and it would just be my love and things, flipping over and all that stuff. So I kind of just study what I want to talk about and when I'm done, I'm done. I'll force it to be as long as the last one or I'll say, oh, that's real short because I found where my three minute ones have, you know, outlived the ones that are 20 minutes. So really the subject is, do you want to listen to it? They take the time that they want to listen to. And I broke up my, my very first couple of ones, I broke them up into seven series. It was called My Every Business. And I was telling you the different things that you could do to protect your business and your brand and literally mind it. But I knew it would be overpowering if I did, if I talked about all of that in one episode. So I broke it into seven episodes. And so it gave people a continuum of, oh, let me finish listening, oh, let me finish listening, type thing. Once you build your audience and you know how long they're listening, it'll tell you how long they're listening. Here's the key. They don't have to listen to the entire thing for you to get paid. As soon as they click it and something happens in that world, then it's technically counted as a listener. Oh, yeah, that's that. Yeah. But now you can't keep doing it from yourself. <laughs> So 
you know, again, the artwork is myself. You know, I have to smile a little more, but <laughs> it is myself. At the moment, I was talking about business, so I was just, you know, talking about business, I wasn't talking about anything in particular. So you build on that. I hope in the next year or two that doubles. If I can get to like 10,000, 20,000, I'm pretty sure if you have 20,000 people listening to you, even if you have 10,000 people listening to you locally, someone is going to want to pay you to cut in there. I would 
launch myself first before I start bringing other people in so they can kind of hold up quickly. This is my personal thing. Establish yourself and then bring others in. I'm also going to ask about your book, um, What There Be Is. Where can you find it? That is in Barnes & Noble, Books A Million. I have autographed copies online. Now that book has nothing to do with podcasting, it has everything to do with business. And I think it basically gives you an A to B blueprint of how I started my business and how to start a business. It's uh, roughly about 80 pages because I, again, I study people, so I know their attention span. If you walk in there and you see a book like this, you're going to be changing it. <laughs> so, uh, but that book, it's available to a million lines in the world, it's both the different. I'm, I'm working on Walmart. I've already submitted the paperwork for Walmart and Target for those who know how to pray. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> no Amazon? It's on Amazon. I'm sorry. It is on Amazon. 